Hey y'all and welcome back to my channel. So today we're talking about all of my current skincare makeup favorites. I am very cutthroat when it comes to favorites videos. I don't like to just throw in everything that I'm enjoying. Like these are the best of the best, top of the top, top of the top. Just like my favorite, favorite, favorite products that I continuously use in my routine and I had to include them in these video. Now there are several makeup products that I love that are outside of this video that I use regularly, but I wanted to make sure that I wasn't overwhelming y'all with a ton of products and um, I only wanted to share with you what my tried and true just favorite, favorite, favorite products are. So anyway, without further ado, make sure you got <laughs> make sure you grab something to drink, grab a snack. I'm tired. It's the end of the day. Um, and let's get into it. All right, let's go ahead and get into it. I've got quite a few products to talk about. Um, all right, so I'm going to start with some skincare products. If you haven't seen my skincare routine, definitely check out that video. Basically everything in that video is a favorite. Also, um, I will link this below as well. Uh, my previous skincare favorites video, I was re-watching that and looking at all of my favorites. They're all basically the same. So that's why I'm not doing like a dedicated current skincare favorites video, but I did just want to mention a few of just like ones that I want to kind of shout to the rooftops and let y'all know that I still love these and they're my holy, holy grails. So I have two masks. The first being the Tammy Fender, Tammy Fender Epi Peel. This is definitely a pricey one, but it is so, so amazing. I purchased this myself and it's like a treatment mask. So it's this really nice cream and it has little micro exfoliants. So what I do is I'll spray my face with whatever kind of face mist. You can just use water, just kind of dampen your skin with water. Take this, I work it over the skin, really exfoliate the skin, and then you leave it on like a mask. So um, I leave it on usually around like 10 to 15 minutes, just depending on what I'm doing, but this is incredible. I've had this for quite a while and I'm about maybe halfway through, so it's expensive, but I think if you just use it maybe like once a week and you know don't, don't apply too much because you really don't need very much, um, this should last you a while, but this is incredible, incredible. It's such a joy to use. I actually look forward to doing this mask, and I also see really, really nice results. And then my other favorite mask is nothing new here. It's the 23 Skin Matcha Clay Powder. I talk about this all the time. I'm obsessed with this mask. No matter your skin type, everyone will love this. It's such a great, versatile mask. So again, check out my skincare routine and check out my previous skincare favorites video. Um, just because I don't want to ramble on too much about these because I talked about both of these in that video. And then kind of moving into the makeup, I'm going to prep my skin with my favorite moisturizer. This is the Pyung Kong Yul Nutrition Cream. I'm absolutely obsessed. I think this is my third or fourth jar. It's my favorite moisturizer ever. Fragrance-free, waterless. It's just so perfect. So... I'm gonna apply this all over my face. And I've been getting a ton of messages from y'all saying that you purchased this and you love it as well. So that makes me so happy. I'm so glad. I love when products work out for you. Um, you know, everyone's skin is different. So you just kind of have to take what I say with a grain of salt. All right, so as far as kind of prep, um, y'all already know I love my PYT one and done setting spray. I'm gonna go and mist my face with this. This is amazing. I'm not gonna talk about this too much because I just sound like a broken record but it's a great skincare mist and makeup mist so however you so choose to use it it's the absolute it's like my favorite setting mist right now um it's just oh uh, the it's, the sensory experience is just so so good all right so I have a few different base products and I wanted to include all of these because just depending on the occasion these are what I reach for. And they are truly like my favorites right now. So on a very, very, very minimal, like true no makeup makeup day, Vita Liberata Beauty Blur. I've already talked about this so much. If you have not seen my no makeup makeup video, definitely check that out. I go into detail about what this product is, why I love it, how I use it. So definitely check that out. But this is so good. I'm almost out of it and I will a thousand percent be repurchasing this. I did buy that myself and I love it, I'm obsessed. And I got my mom hooked on it as well. And then 
for a little bit more coverage, a little bit of an elevated look. Beauty Counter Dew Skin, man, this stuff is so good. I also love using this to prep my face before going in with foundation because it really just feels like a super luxurious, thick, hydrating gel cream hybrid. I don't even know how to describe it. It's such a beautiful formula. So you can, of course, wear it on its own. You can wear it underneath foundation, however you see fit. You can mix it in with products. And then a level up from that, Trini London BFF Serum Distress. This is so good. It's actually very, very similar to Beauty Counter Dew Skin, but with more coverage. It's fantastic. And then when I want the full coverage, long wearing, like we're, we're doing a full face of makeup, Hourglass Vanish Stick Foundation. This stuff is bomb. It's so good. It makes your skin look like you have a filter on it. It's it's so beautiful, so beautiful. There, There's a reason why so many people love this product. So I used Trini London in my last video. Um, so I'll go ahead and prep my skin with a little bit of dew skin just to show you how that applies. And then I'm actually gonna use my Hourglass foundation today. So this is the shade Medium. And I, I would just suggest using your fingers. You really don't need any kind of brush or sponge. Don't treat this like a foundation. Just treat it like a, an extra step of your skincare routine because it does not give you any coverage. It just gives you the most beautiful, hydrated, glowy look. But it just gives the skin such a beautiful, juicy, supple look and uh, a true kind of like pool day, gym, no makeup makeup day. That's a great product. Um, all right, so I, like I mentioned, I'm gonna use my Hourglass Vanish Stick Foundation, and I also wanted to show you these beauties. Uh, I talked about these in my monthly makeup kit video. Uh, these are the Aether Beauty uh, Glow Oil and Illuminating Oil. Um, they have two different names, but I think they're the same product, just different shades. So I have Desert Moon, and Desert Sun. Desert Sun is limited edition. Desert Moon is part of her permanent line. Um, but I want to use Desert Sun because I just want a nice glowy sun-kissed look to my skin. My favorite way to use these is uh, mixed in with a foundation. Um, so since I'm using a stick foundation today, I'll show you how I do that. But I mean, do you see how gorgeous that is? It's so beautiful. It's actually infused with diamond powder, um, as with a lot of Aether products. And it's just such a, it's such a lovely product. So, um, stick foundations, in my experience, are usually pretty dry. But this one's such a dream to use. So I'm just gonna apply that on my face and then I'm gonna take the oil. All right, I'm gonna start there and I'm just gonna work the oil into the foundation. Usually if I use a liquid foundation, I just apply you know one or two drops to it, but since I'm using a stick foundation, you can either apply it to your hand work it into the brush and then go on top of your stick foundation or you can just drop it on your face, whatever you feel the most comfortable with. So for concealer, this was a little bit difficult because um, there are quite a few concealers that I actually really enjoy. Which one can I always count on? Which one is always just gonna look good? It's gonna wear well. Um, it's just a no-brainer. Like I, I, every time I use it, it always just performs well and I don't have to, I just don't have to try too hard. And that's the e.l.f. Hydrating Camo Concealer. This stuff is so good. You can do it, you can do your entire face with just this concealer which I have done before in my e.l.f. video, so definitely check that out. You can use deeper shades for contour, bronzer. It's just, it's so good. You cannot go wrong with this concealer. So this is definitely my favorite concealer right now. If I had to pick one, this is it. All right, so this next category was very difficult for me to narrow it down because my love for bronzer is very strong, especially cream bronzer, so I actually have a few in this category. They're all very different, but yeah, it was really hard to narrow it down. So cream bronzer, oh, I love cream bronzer. So for a shimmery option, Tower 28 Bronzino. 
hands down the best. I love the formula. There's no coconut. Um, they just expanded their shade range. Uh, my favorite shade is West Coast. And then if I'm not applying any makeup to my face, I love Gold Coast. Just amazing. So this is what the two look like. You can see the dent I've made in West Coast. But yeah, so beautiful. So if you like a shimmery cream bronzer option, um, that's a great one. And I had to include those because sometimes I do want a shimmery option. So for a more matte option, um, my Danessa Myricks Balm Contour, you already know how much I love this. This was in my last favorites video. Um, I've hit pan on this. It's such a beautiful balmy sh sheer-ish. I mean, it's got, it's got good pigmentation, but it's definitely more on the sheer side in the sense that you really can't overdo it. Um, it just blends out effortlessly. So love this. And the newest addition to my cream bronzer favorites is the Soul Body Face and Body Bronzer. So if you don't want to shell out the cash for Danessa Myricks, this is a really great alternative. I would say in terms of application, pigmentation, just overall experience, very, very similar to Danessa Myricks. It's not quite as balmy and it's not quite, so it's not quite as dewy on the skin. Um, so if you have more oily skin, you may appreciate this one a little bit more. It's not like super, super matte, like a cream to powder or anything. So I used my Soul Body Bronzer in my last video. I'm going to use Danessa Myricks today. I actually haven't used her in a little bit because I've been so obsessed with that Soul Body one, but oh, you cannot go wrong with any of these. They are so good. So I use Light 2 in Danessa Myricks. I'll have all the shades for all the products I'm talking about listed in the description box if you're curious. Make sure to blend out my jawline this time. Oh my gosh, that was driving me insane. I'm sure it was driving y'all insane. All right, so I do have a couple powders. There are so many powders that I love. I love so many powders and I'm I'm very picky about powders and there are, I actually have a really good collection of powders that I love, I can rely on. I know they're going to help my help set my makeup down but they're not gonna just look like powder on the skin there's so many powders but I narrowed it down to my top two and that is the hourglass veil translucent setting powder and this new Chantecai or I guess it's not new it's new to me Chantecai perfect blur finishing powder I kid you not it makes you look like you have an Instagram filter on your face it is wild it is wild so I'm gonna go ahead and set my face with the hourglass one I'm not gonna use both I don't need to use both but yeah I love both of these I think if you're trying to decide between the two Price point is going to play a big factor. Uh, the Chantecai one is so, so, so pricey. They're both pricey, but the Chantecai one is really pricey. I find that this one is a little bit more on the glowy side. This one definitely has more of like a satiny kind of blurred effect on the skin. It's not a, it's not a glowy powder by any means. This one actually has quite a bit of glow to it. So I'm actually going to use a sponge with the hourglass one. I actually think a sponge, a damp sponge is like my favorite way to use it. I don't know, it just like melts the powder in in such a beautiful way. So I just pick up a little bit of the powder and then just press this. Really, really press it into my under eye. Been going a little heavier on the powder recently because it's just been so hot and humid here. And I did want to mention really quickly with the Chantecai powder, my favorite way to apply it is with a kind of small dense buffing brush so instead of using something really fluffy like this with a lot of movement I highly recommend getting something a little bit more dense and pressing the powder on the skin that's really where you're going to see just this powder really come to life so um, I just want to mention that since I'm not using that today but I find that that's really where you get to see that like just beautiful filtered blurred just oh it looks so beautiful on the skin all right, so again, I love bronzer so much. I have to mention a powder bronzer that I just love. And the reason I'm mentioning cream and powder is because I love pairing a cream bronzer um, with a, a matte cream bronzer. So either my Danessa Myricks Balm Contour or the Soul Body one with a powdery, shimmery 
powder shimmery bronzer and the one that I'm just obsessed with is the Lila B Be Sun Kiss bronzer again there are several other powder bronzers that I love and I use regularly but this is the this is the one that I always just come back to so I just take it on a really big brush this is a refer 22 also just a lovely product this is such a such an expensive brush I do love it but I don't know if I could recommend this brush because it's just so pricey but I just take it on a big fluffy brush and just sweep that across the cheek area, the forehead, the nose. All right, so for the brows, I actually have a new favorite. So I love, there's a lot of pencils that I like. Um, I think my kind of continual favorite has been the PYT brow pencil. I actually ran out of that a while back, so I've been using this brow product just just to make sure that I'm using everything in my collection before going out and buying another brow pencil. And I'm kind of obsessed with this. Um, I've, I've loved it ever since I got it. Um, I did purchase this myself, but I don't know, for some reason just recently, I've been super into using powders in the brows instead of a pencil. I find that my brows look more natural and not so drawn on. So the one that I've been loving is the RMS Brow Powder. This is in the shade Dark. You can of course use an eyeshadow. Um, I love this one because I love the shade of it. It's just a nice kind of like charcoal gray, which I actually prefer in my brows. I like something a little bit more ashy, and basically I love just a gray color in my brows um, because they are so cool toned, but I don't want to use black. So I love these kind of gray shades, and this brow powder is so good. It wears really, really well. So yeah, this is just the one that I've been reaching for. Again, there are a lot of brow products that I've enjoyed. I still love my PYT pencil, but just from going off of what I've been reaching for regularly and what I've been enjoying, this is definitely it. Definitely want to fluff up my brows, kind of set them in place. I like a little bit of more of a feathery, fluffy brow. And soap. Soap is my favorite. Um, I love the new ColourPop one. Um, there's a lot of brow gels that I enjoy, but just good old glycerin soap is my favorite. So this is my little DIY homemade <laughs> soap brows. I think it cost me like less than $5 to make. So I just take my, I wet it down with some water, take my spoolie to activate it. When you find something that's good, it's just, it's kind of hard to compete. So just run, oops, run the soap through my brows. Take the back end of my brush and lay them down. All right, really quickly before I forget, I'm gonna do some faux freckles and the ColourPop freckle pen is the bomb. It has changed the game for me with faux freckles. There are lots of products I like to use. Uh, for instance, Danessa Myrick's Color Fix and Exposed, but this just takes a lot more work, a lot more time. It's not as quick and just for every day, I love how just practical the application of this is. I talked about this in my monthly makeup kit video, but I just, faux freckle products I have not had the best luck with and this is the one that has just changed the game for me. It makes it so easy. I use this in the shade Soft Brown and it's just super, super easy. Great for days when I'm not wearing any makeup at all, but I just want to accentuate my freckles a little bit. And then obviously great for days when I am wearing a full face of makeup and I just want to make sure that I can still see my freckles underneath all of my makeup products. Yeah, so, so good. And I haven't had any issues with it drying out or not applying on top of makeup products. It's really, really good. I've really enjoyed that. All right, so for the eyes, I also talked about this in my monthly makeup video, monthly makeup kit video. I don't wear eyeshadow on a regular basis. There are a lot of eyeshadow palettes that I love, like my Aether Rose Quartz palette. That's, I think that's made like every favorites video I've, I, I ever do, but just if we're talking about what I'm using regularly and just what I'm reaching for, I don't wear eyeshadows. But I did want to mention some eye products that I feel like are truly unique, are just different than other things on the market and they're they're just good like they're just really really good like they nailed the formula so well so the first is the Trini London eye to eye in mystery this is the only shade that I have I haven't tried any of her other shades 
Um, but this shade in particular, I love the shade. It's a nice kind of cool taupey brown with um, some shimmer. And I love the formula of this. It applies so nicely. Um, you can just use your finger. Um, it does not crease as bad as other cream eyeshadows. It does crease a little bit. But honestly, it's not that bad. Like, I don't, and it's not that it sets down to a completely matte dry finish. Like, it stays nice and flexible on the eyes. But for some reason, it just doesn't crease that much on me. I don't know. So, yeah, I just love this. And I don't mind when eyeshadow, cream eyeshadows crease. Um, that's not like a deal breaker for me. But I think just on top of it being super easy to apply, just such a nice formula, the fact that it doesn't crease that bad is um, definitely a plus. So, yeah, I really want to try some more shades of these. If y'all have tried these and you have any recommendations, let me know because I love this color. It's a great one-and-done eyeshadow, um, and I really want to try more shades. So, yeah, huge fan of Trini London. Honestly, everything I've tried from Trini London has just been so good. Um, so I really want to try out some more products. And then, oh, I love these so much. These are very near and dear to me. They are the Bodyography Glitter Pigments. Like, you cannot go wrong with these. They are a 100% dupe for the Hourglass Scattered Lights eyeshadows. And, whoa, and they're a lot more affordable. So, I just pulled some of my favorite shades. If you're wanting a little bit more color in your life, my favorite uh, colorful shades are Blue Morpho and Aura Glow. Blue Morpho is a really pretty periwinkle, Aura Glow is a gorgeous, like, duochrome lavender shade. Just, oh, so, both of them are gorgeous. And then if you want just something a little bit more natural, more for every day, my favorite, favorite, favorite shade, the one that I would recommend to everyone if you've never tried Bodyography Glitter Pigments is the shade Sparkler. It's this gorgeous, warm champagne. It's just... Oh, it's so beautiful. So I use this one all the time, so I'm not going to use this one today. I'm actually going to use this other shade, which is a little bit more on the neutral side. And this is called Off the Hook, and it's more of a shimmery taupe. So it's a little bit more cool toned, a little bit richer than Sparkler. Um, that's what it looks like. So I'm just going to take this across the eye. Again, your fingers is the best way to apply these. I mean, it's just such a beautiful formula. You can really load these up and make them super, super, super glittery. Or you can just do a light wash like this just to give the eyes a little bit of shine. But yeah, I'm absolutely obsessed with these. They're such an innovative, cool formula. So whether you like more colorful looks, you like more glam looks, you like more natural looks, I think everyone should be able to find something in the range that fits their preference. Um, they're just incredible, incredible pigments. I mean, they're just beautiful. All right, so this is probably by far the most exciting favorite for me because I have such a hard time in this category and so many brands claim different things with their mascaras and very rarely do they actually live up to that, just to be brutally honest. I... It's very hard for me to find a mascara that I'm just absolutely in love with. So when I found this one, when I tried this one, I was completely blown away, like from the beginning. And that's very rarely the case. Even some of my favorite mascaras that I've loved over the years, it really has taken me time to kind of get into them. You know, they have to kind of dry out a little bit before I really find that sweet spot. But this one, oh gosh, she is so, 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 so good. And it is the Lawless one and done mascara she is beautiful she holds a curl she has the most amazing amazing volume like it looks like i'm wearing false lashes it's incredible so i would say the closest thing to this is the bite beauty upswing mascara um in terms of the way it looks on the lashes but this takes volume to another level and it holds a curl better than the bite upswing mascara so i like the bite one um it's still a fantastic volumizing mascara one of my favorites but this takes the cake like she she has taken out all the competition so i'm gonna go and apply it the uh let me curl my lashes the um the applicator is actually not one that I would normally gravitate towards. I usually prefer a more natural bristle wand, 
but this one, it just works. And I like the little ball tip because then you can really get in this little inner lashes. Get every little hair. And then you can get on the outer lash. Get every little hair. And you can kind of use it to separate your lashes as well. All right, so that's the mascara. Truly magical. I'm obsessed. End of story. So good. All right, so I went ahead and just put a little bit of lipstick on and I wanted to share share with you my favorite lip liner right now, which is Bodyography's Barely There. I use this in almost every video. I mean, I feel like every time I'm doing my YouTube videos linking everything, I'm constantly linking this lip pencil because it's my favorite. It's the most uh, kind of warm brownie lip liner that I own, which finding a good warm brown nude brown lip liner is hard i feel like lip liners tend to go more mauve more pink same with lipsticks but this one is just so good so she's a favorite and just as a whole if y'all are wanting to try a new brand or just kind of get outside the ulta sephora like bubble bodyography is such an amazing brand I've already talked about their glitter pigments, but their stick foundation is really good. Um, so definitely look into Bodyography. They've got some really great products. Um, I actually really want to try some more from them. They have a tinted moisturizer that looks so up my alley. Um, but yeah, their lip pencils are really, really good. I have another shade called Pouty. So if you like more of a mauve undertone, Pouty's a really good one. Or more cool, I guess. not Maybe not mauve, but more cool. But this one is my favorite. All right, guys, that completes my favorites. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you found this helpful. If you haven't seen my monthly makeup kit video, definitely go check that out. I kind of go into more detail about a lot of the products that I've been using in the month of May, as well as just kind of some of my staple products. But yeah, these are my tried and true products that I've just been absolutely obsessed with. They have my stamp of, stamp of approval. I'm in love. And like I said, I really try and only pick the best of the best. And to me, these are the best of the best. So thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Remember, I love you, God loves you, and I'll see y'all in my next video. Bye guys. Broke it, broke it.